We drove to the freaking Arctic Circle. We got in the Arctic Ocean. We saw the Northern Lights for the first time and we just saw so much incredible scenery along the way. That was just hands down one of our favorite things we have ever done. Go. We're about to embark on maybe our coolest adventure yet. We are driving to the Arctic Ocean along the Dempster Highway. The Dempster Highway is Canada's northernmost highway and is the only highway in Canada that crosses the Arctic Circle. It starts just east of Dawson City and goes 740 kilometers up to Inuvik, where it then connects to the Inuvik Tuktoyaktuk Highway for another 152 kilometers to Tuktoyaktuk, also known as Tuk. And the kicker is, minus a few miles, the entire drive is unpaved and very remote. I've been very nervous about this drive for many months. When you research about it, you read all these horror stories about cracked windshields and flat tires and how you need to carry two spare tires, but we've only got a way to carry one. So we've got one spare tire, a tire patch kit, extra fuel, and we've already got a bunch of cracks in our windshield, so I'm hoping we'll be all right. It took me a lot of convincing over the last year to get Adam to agree to this drive, but how often can you say that you drove to the Arctic Ocean? It's gonna be a rough ride. Almost 900 kilometers of gravel and unpaved roads is gonna have the van creaking and shaking, but we never thought we'd make it to the Arctic Ocean. So the fact that we're not only going, but we're driving ourselves there is just an experience that we could not pass up. All right, Adam, are you ready to do this? There's no turning back now. <laughs> Of course, right as we're about to leave, start the van and the screen is playing games again. It didn't turn on. What the heck? <laughs> oh no, we're starting out with problems. This yeah, isn't good. Not good, right? <laughs> now we're ready to go. If you missed our last video, we've actually already driven the first 72 kilometers of the Dempster Highway, which wasn't too bad to get to Tombstone Territorial Park, where we spent yesterday going on an epic hike to Grizzly Lake. So we're starting our drive right by the park and have about 811 kilometers left. Construction of the highway began in 1959 and it reached Inuvik by 1979 and the road was built to accommodate oil and gas exploration activities. And the unique thing about the road is that it's built up on a berm to insulate the permafrost underneath it because if the permafrost melts then the road is going to sink down into the ground. In 2017, the road was continued up to Tuck, connecting it to the Arctic Ocean. But this isn't the only way you can get to the Arctic Ocean. There is another route you can take, the Dalton Highway in Alaska. We chose to drive the Dempster Highway in Canada instead because one, we wanted to go to Tombstone Territorial Park, and also because the drive itself and the endpoint just seemed a bit more exciting to us. From our understanding, the Dalton Highway is a bit rougher and it just takes you to oil fields at the end. And to actually go into the Arctic Ocean, you either have to pay or have a guide, whereas the Dempster Highway takes you to a small town and you're able to explore more freely. And just to set expectations straight, the part of the Arctic Ocean we are going to is not going to be filled with giant icebergs or have polar bears running around. It's basically just flatland and water. But for us, this whole experience is just as much about the journey as it is the destination. And we are just so excited to experience all of it. We want to make as many stops as we can along the way to enjoy everything the road has to offer. And first up, I'm going to do a little fishing in the Blackstone River. I read that in just about every river and stream along the Dempster, you can find Arctic grayling, so my hopes are pretty high. Oh yeah! Yes! <laughs> Whoa! Oh my gosh! I need my hat. Okay, hold on, hold on. Oh, 
I'm so excited. Hurry. Here's that. Oh my gosh. No, 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 no. I saw a YouTube video of a guy using his hat as a net and I forgot to get one while I was in Anchorage and so I thought it was a good idea. We but didn't have the hat ready. Yeah, it wasn't ready and I thought... <laughs> we really didn't expect you to away. catch a fish though. Yeah, I wasn't expecting to catch one, but now we know they're in here and I'm gonna keep hunting for it. <laughs> yes! <laughs> that was so exciting. Right as Adam hooked that fish, we were talking about how we hadn't seen any fish, it wasn't looking very hopeful, and I think we were just kind of down for a second. And then it happened and we just were not prepared, so we were scrambling, just trying to get the hat. It was just chaotic, so... That one was kind of a miss, but we are going to get one. And by we, I mean Adam. I'm just here for emotional support. <laughs> so I had a pretty good, like, five-minute stretch of some pretty good action, but nothing in, in the last, like, at least half hour or so. We have a long way to drive, so we should probably get going. This drive is insanely beautiful so far. We've had mountains around us the entire time and the fall colors are just popping off right now. As we mentioned in our last video, the end of August is the start of fall around here. And today is September 1st and we didn't necessarily plan to do this drive during fall foliage because it's really hard to predict when peak colors will be, but we just feel so lucky with how our timing worked out because this drive would be gorgeous even if everything was green, but just having the mix of colors just makes everything even more interesting to look at. I almost don't want to say anything because I know the road is going to get worse, but ever since we left Tombstone Park, the road has been really nice. It's nice and bare, not as many potholes, and I can actually go a decent speed, and that is not something I can normally say when we're on a gravel road driving brisket. We're going a cool 70 kilometers an hour right now. Woo! We are flying through the dumpster. Also, the scenery has changed so much since we left Tombstone. When we were in the park, the mountains were a bit more jagged, and now they're more rounded. Some of them are covered in trees. Some of them are totally bare. It's just really crazy how much the scenery can change in about 30 minutes or so. And we're going to experience a lot of different scenery changes on this drive, which just keeps it really exciting. I cannot put the camera down because it seems like around every single corner, there is something just completely different to look at. We had planned to do a hike in this area called Sapper Hill, but I spent a little too much time fishing, so we're running a little behind. It's already after 3.30, and we've got about 300 kilometers left to go today. So we're gonna try really hard to do it on our way back down, because this area is so cool. It's got these crazy rock formations that jut out of the mountain sides. It's unlike anything we've seen today. where we started Dawson City came through the Ogilvy Mountains came down and then we're right about here and then we're gonna cross through this flatter area the Eagle Plains go across the Richardson Mountains spoiler alert a couple river crossings to Inuvik and then eventually to Tuck We are approaching our first town along the Dempster, Eagle Plains, and according to the sign, it is a population of nine. It is a bustling metropolis. We're gonna fuel up because you need to fuel up every chance you get. That is the craziest looking gas pump I've ever seen. 
the guy comes out and first of all he turns the gas pump on and then he pumps your fuel never seen anything like that wasn't expecting that besides the gas station there is a hotel there so if you need a place to sleep they got you covered but we're back on the road and our next stop is the arctic circle read and researched I thought this Eagle Plains area was gonna be you know just flat and not very interesting but it has been gorgeous it, the drive hasn't stopped being gorgeous no not at all not one bit I cannot believe that we drove our van to the Arctic Circle. I never in my life thought we'd be standing here right now. This isn't even our final destination, but this is the first major milestone of this journey. Oh my gosh, so exciting. Yeah, this is just, this is just a crazy moment. Looking at the map, where we are, oh man, it's uh, so cool. This isn't our final stopping point for the day. We still hope to drive 60 more kilometers and reach another very exciting milestone crossing into the Northwest Territories. We made it! Our second Canadian Territory! <laughs> Woo! <Wow. laughs> Check it out. We're seeing signs for Tuck. Woo! Woo! I'm so happy. <laughs> it's so cold. Let's get out of here. It's so cold. <laughs> We drove about 400 kilometers today, and tonight we're sleeping just past the Northwest Territories border, and you actually change time zones when you cross into the Northwest Territories, and it is 11.30 p.m. right now. It's 10.30 p.m. in our heads, but regardless, it is late, and we were trying to avoid driving in the dark, which we kind of failed at a little bit, so we didn't want to stop and make dinner because it would take too much time, so we are starving. Since we had to stock up on about a week's worth of food, and the options in Dawson City were a bit more limited, we're making quick and simple meals for this adventure and tonight we are having spaghetti with meat sauce which we've had basically for the last three meals but it's okay we uh we like spaghetti so it's all good cheers to an amazing and successful first day on the dempster highway it's 3 a.m and before we went to bed we set an alarm to get up to try to look for one of our top bucket list items the northern lights and I peeked out really quick. I'm like, shake, I'm like, we literally just woke up a couple minutes ago. Adam was dead asleep, but I'm so awake right now because I looked outside and I'm pretty sure they're out there right now and I'm kind of freaking out a bit. So we're gonna go look. Wow. Oh. It's green in the camera. What? Oh my gosh.
have seen. The northern freaking lights is so crazy. That they just look way different than I thought they would. They like move and kind of like dance. It's like shadows in the sky. They dance way more than I thought they would. So cool. It's a pretty cloudy night, so they're maybe not as visible as they can be, but you can see them with your eyes. And they're, they're like pink colors in there. They're green. Oh my gosh. The northern freaking lights. The northern freaking lights. And you can just see so many stars too. Like This is, we've been hoping to see them for about a week. This is, oh. bucket list achieved. believe we finally saw him that was the coolest thing I don't even know what to say it was just it was just like magic to your eyes we were out there for about an hour and it was so hard to get ourselves to come back inside just when we would think that they were gone because they would kind of get really dim and you couldn't really see them they'd reemerge they get brighter they'd start dancing around again <sighs> if it was that magical on a cloudy night I can't even imagine like a clear night the sky wasn't even fully pitch black either. There were some kind of light spots, so it wasn't probably the best conditions. So I just, I can't even process what it would be like if it was a clear night. That was just insane. One of the coolest things, one of the coolest natural things I have ever seen. But I think we have to get up in like two hours, so I guess we should go back to bed. Our original plan for today was to make it all the way to Tuck, but after how long yesterday was and how little sleep we got last night, our new plan is to get to Inuvik, which is about 270 kilometers away. One unique thing about the Dempster Highway is that there are two different rivers you have to cross, and to cross them you get to take ferries. These ferries are free and they're offered from late June until early November. Then the other times of the year, the rivers just freeze over and you just drive across them, which is really crazy to think about. The first river we'll be crossing is the Peel River and these ferries do have set hours that they operate, but there is a visitor center in Dawson City for the Dempster Highway, which has the hours listed. This one opens up at 9.15 a.m. today. We're getting there around 8.45, so we'll have a little bit of time to kill, but we're hoping that means we get to go on the first ferry. Not five seconds after we drove onto the ferry, it's already moving. And what's unique about this one is it's just pulled across by a cable. That was super quick and easy. And it was very, very similar to the ferry that we took across the river to get into Dawson City. We just made a quick pit stop in Fort McPherson, which is a short drive from the ferry to fuel up, and now we're back on the road to our next river crossing. For those curious about cell phone service, we actually had our phones on airplane mode the last two days because we had heard that we wouldn't have service until Anubik, but we turned it off airplane mode about 30 minutes before the ferry crossing, and we actually had decent service, and then we had really good service in Fort McPherson, which was a really nice surprise. Our second river crossing, we'll be crossing the Mackenzie River, which is the longest river in Canada and the second longest river in North America behind the mighty Mississippi. These are just so fun. They're just so casual. You just drive right on and then they go. <laughs> they don't, it just seems very casual. We can say we've been to the Arctic Ocean by van and by ferry. Oh, yeah.
there's a bear! First bear sighting on the Dempster, finally. Woo, that was so awesome. Yeah, big black bear. He was just munching away on something and I think we finally got to answer the age old question. You know which one. We're getting really close to Inuvik, and check this out. There's paved road. What, what the heck is this? What is this? I forgot what it felt like. Yeah. We're trying to save most of our thoughts on the road until the very end because we just don't want to jinx anything, but I anticipated being very annoyed by how rough the ride would be. I thought we would just be like, like, like this the whole time, and it would be loud and annoying, but honestly, it has not been that annoying at all. And at the end of our drives, I'm always a little sad that we're done driving because I have not minded it. Granted, I'm not the one driving. It hasn't been bad but at all. As a passenger, I have thoroughly enjoyed it. We have made it to the largest town along the Dempster Highway, Inuvik, which means place of people or man, and is rich in indigenous culture and people, including Anuvia Luit, Gwichin, and Matisse. And for the rest of the day, we're gonna walk around and check out the town. For our first stop in Anuvik, we came to the Western Arctic Visitor Center where they have a lot of information and displays about the area. And you can get a certificate certifying that you have crossed the Arctic Circle. It says the Order of Arctic Adventures bears witness that Adam, Catherine, and Kona Fraser have demonstrated the initiative, integrity, and bold adventure spirit of the true Arctic explorers who have crossed the Arctic Circle will hereafter be recognized as honorable members of the exclusive Arctic Circle, Circle chapter, Order of Arctic Adventurers. We're Arctic Adventurers. That was, a, that was a lot of Arctic, that was a, kind of a tongue twister, but we're official. <laughs> Wanna guess what? You're an Arctic adventurer. One of the most iconic sites in all of Northern Canada is the Our Lady of Victory Church, also known as the Igloo Church. It was built to imitate the Inuvia Lewitt Igloo style snow houses. It's a very unique and beautiful building that was built in 1960 and actually without a blueprint. since all three of us have basically been sitting still for two full days now and it's a gorgeous day outside. I'm actually wearing a tank top here in the Arctic Circle. I never thought that would happen. I expected it to be much colder here. We decided to walk from town down to the river and then to an area called Boot Lake to take Kona on a little walk. This has been a nice little leg stretcher around Boot Lake. The water is just like glass, so it is beautiful reflections. And then you have the fall colors in the background. But now we're gonna walk back into town to take advantage of an amenity we haven't seen much along the Dempster Highway, a grocery store. The grocery store actually had a pretty decent selection, especially for being so far north. It was kind of like a department store in there. They sold clothes, they sold snowmobiles, they even had a KFC and a Pizza Hut in there. And speaking of food, we had hoped to eat at a spot in town called Alistine's for dinner tonight. They supposedly have really good fish and chips, but unfortunately, they have already closed for the season. So if you come here before September, go check them out. If you come here early September, they may not be open, but we're just gonna head to our campground for the night and make some dinner there instead. Tonight we're staying at Jack Campground, which is just south of town. It costs $24 a night, has free showers, and this really cool observation tower that overlooks the area. 
since last night was a really late night, we're gonna hit the hay early because we've got a big day tomorrow. Today is the day we are going to the Arctic Ocean! Woo! Yes! The sunrise has been chef's kiss. It has been crazy to see just how much the scenery has changed on this drive. A few days ago when we started, we were surrounded by mountains, which slowly transitioned into more rolling hills. Then it got a little bit flatter, but just covered in trees. And then today, as we're inching closer to Tuck, there are hardly any trees around and there's just water everywhere you look. I will say though, this section of the road is definitely the worst. It is very bumpy and I cannot go nearly as fast. You probably can hear everything rattling in our van right now. We're back to normal brisket on uh, unpaved road speed. <laughs> Getting so close, we're almost to the end of the dang road. Eee! Into the road, into the road. That is the Arctic Ocean. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we did it! We made it! Oh my gosh! Oh my goodness. Ah! I can't believe we made it here. <laughs> this is so cool. Oh my gosh. Arctic Ocean. But there's only one way to celebrate this occasion. We gotta get in the water. <laughs> it's kinda chilly out yeah. today. It does not get in the Arctic Ocean weather. It's 50 something degrees out. Fahrenheit. Oh, I'm so nervous. Getting in cold water is one of my least favorite things. Breathe. But you can't come to the Arctic Breathe. Ocean and not do this. You just gotta send it. <laughs> oh <laughs> Lord. <laughs> <sighs> it's rocky underneath. <sighs> oh, that's cold. <sighs> oh, that's cold. Ready? Ready? <sighs> you good? <Ready>? Yes. <laughs> Go. Oh, we, did it. we got in the Arctic Ocean. Woo. We're in the Arctic Ocean. Oh, oh we're back home. <laughs> we did it. We made it. I don't know the exact temperature of it. I forgot to look it up, but it was really, really cold. Woo, way to go. <laughs> now it's bonus turn. Now it's time to dry off, warm up, and then go explore a bit.
Tuck is an Anuvialuit community and was inhabited by the Anuvialuit for centuries before being established in 1936 as a Hudson's Bay trading post and transport depot. It was originally named Port Brabant before being renamed in 1950 and was the first place in Canada to revert to its traditional indigenous name. It's a very small town and besides the Arctic Ocean, there's a handful of sites in and near town to check out, which is what we plan to do today. Right behind me is a traditional sod house which is built out of driftwood and uses sod for insulation. It was designed so that the warm air stayed in and the cooler air would be trapped in the tunnel that leads into the dwelling. I believe they do have tours that can take you inside the sod house, but I haven't really been able to find a ton of information on when they are, so I don't think we'll be able to, but it would be really neat to go inside and see what the inside looks like. We're adding another certificate to the collection. This one is for dipping our toes in the Arctic Ocean, but we dipped more than a toe. We were walking back to the van to head to a spot outside of town, but a local stopped us on the way and told us that you can see some beluga whales from another spot in town, and now we're following him in his truck. He's going to go show us where they're at. <laughs> Well, that was a very unexpected surprise. We saw six to eight beluga whales and you would just see their white backs pop over the water and then go back under. And Tyrone, who's the local that stopped us and told us about them, turns out he's actually the deputy mayor of Tuck. He was telling us all about how important whales are to the diet here in Tuck and how they hunt and harvest whales and how one whale can feed a family for an entire winter and they use all parts of the whale. It's just really interesting to learn about. And these type of local experiences that you can't really plan for sometimes are one of our favorite things about traveling. We just feel like we learned so much about Tuck just from the hour that we unexpectedly spent with Tyrone. And he's now taking us up to some tower that he says isn't open to the public, but since he's deputy mayor, he can, he can take us there and we'll be okay. And it's supposed to have some nice views over the area. If you ever see this, Tyrone, thank you very much for taking us around. That was very nice of you to do. But now we're off to see a very iconic geological feature of the area, Pingos. The area around Tuck is home to over 1,350 Pingos, which is the highest concentration in the world. You may be wondering what is a pingo and we'll tell you more in a bit, but right next to town is the Pingo National Landmark, which protects eight of these pingos. And the only way to get closer to them is by water. So we're going kayaking. There are a few different paddling routes you can do to check out the pingos, but we're doing the shortest one, which is about four kilometers round trip, and will take us to a boardwalk that we can then walk on to get a good view of one of the pingos. Right, we made it. Wow. This is so cool. For 
those of you out there still wondering what the heck a pingo is, pingo is an Anuvialuit word for small hill. It's a type of paraglacial landform, which means it's created through processes of freezing and thawing. Pingos are covered on the outside in tundra, and then the core of it is made of ice. They're basically ice dome hills, and they grow much in the same way that a can of soda expands as it freezes. They have been used by the Inuvia Luit for centuries as navigational aids and to spot caribou on land as well as whales offshore. This pingo right behind me is Ibyuk, the second tallest pingo in the world at 49 meters tall and 305 meters wide, which is about as tall as a 15-story building. This is such a beautiful scene. For one, the pingo is so unique, but then you have all this water all around it and the fall colors and the other pingos in the background. And this is actually a big reason why we chose the Dempster Highway versus the Dalton Highway. As soon as I saw the pingos and learned more about them and learned how they exist in such few places on this earth, I just knew we could not pass up a chance to come see it for ourselves. For dinner, we came to Grandma's Kitchen, which is the place to eat here in Tuck, and we came to try one item in particular, muck tuck. So as we mentioned earlier, whale hunting is a big part of the culture here, and so is eating whale, and what muck tuck is, is it is beluga whale blubber and skin. It's something I never thought I would try in my lifetime, but it is a delicacy here. People really love it. I just watched someone who's visiting here try it, and he really enjoyed it. They say it's best with salt on it, so we put a little bit of salt on it, and here we go. That is such an interesting texture. It's not overly fishy. There's a little bit of a fishiness to it. It's not overly fishy. Kind of chewy. Almost someone, I think I read or I heard some people kind of compare it to like a pork belly. It's kind of fat. It's obviously it's fatty. Huh. Yeah, that's much better than I anticipated actually. <laughs> Hard to describe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The white part is chewy. And then the other part is a little, you know, more tender. But yeah, it's a really interesting flavor there. I don't know. It's I, I can I can taste what it tastes like, but I can't think of what it is. It's just it's really rich. Yeah, it is really rich. Um, but it's good though. I like it. Muck tuck cheers. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little buttery. Yeah. Sort of? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Huh. I never thought I would eat whale. Yeah. This is no cool. Way. I'm so glad we got to try yeah, something that's a interesting... super just local food item. Yeah, nice experience. Grandma also cooks up some mean looking burgers and she bakes her own bread too. Ooh, Ooh those look good. Mm. That bun is really good. It's crunchy. Got a good toast to it. There's grilled onions on the bottom. Oh, yeah. Our first, like, gourmet food in a while. Yeah. <laughs> we've been eating a lot of spaghetti that we've made. Mmm. Yeah. <laughs> that is delicious. Grandma, you whip up a mean burger. Mmm. There is one main campground here in Tuck and it costs 63 Canadian per night, which you can pay at the visitor center. It's a pretty basic campground. There are no hookups or anything, but check out the view. We're right on the water. Do you like the view? Something I never thought I'd say until recently, sleeping with the Arctic Ocean outside my back window. Getting to the Arctic Ocean was only half the battle. We still have to get back down, 
This morning we're beginning our drive back down the Dempster and since we filmed all the drive up, we're not gonna film very much on the way down so that we can move faster, but here are a few highlights. So maybe we'll start off with a low light. We've been driving all day. It's 5.45 now and we've made it all the way to the border between Yukon Territory and Northwest Territories and we're going up through the mountain passes and I noticed the van just doesn't have as much power as it normally has going up hills and I also I'm usually able to you know manually change the gears here when I'm going downhill things like that and it wasn't doing that um, so I pulled over to just look in the engine to see if anything obvious you know showed up or that I could see I didn't see anything you know and so turned the van off and then turned it back on and now the check engine light is on um, a lot of times it'll give you like a message of what's going on but it doesn't say anything um, so yeah <laughs> I don't know uh, yeah, the Dempster is striking <laughs> oh no besides the van struggling uphill and also not changing gears it seems to be driving okay and our plan is to make it to Eagle Plains which is about 90 kilometers away because they have a gas station there and then next to it they have this little repair shop so we're hoping they have a code reader which yes we know we should have a code reader but we forgot to get one so we're hoping that they'll still be open by the time we get there we can just see why the check engine light is on and then hopefully it's nothing major we can keep on going on our merry way but i think i think this might be worse than having a flat tire yeah yeah i'd rather have a flat tire i can change a flat tire i can't diagnose this yeah flat tire we could fix it yeah. chip wind windshield we already have three no chips man it's fine we're just waiting until we get back to texas to fix that but yeah knowing we could have engine problems when we still have a ton of driving to do to get back to the lower 48 and we have commitments down there that are kind of putting a time crunch on us not not super ideal but it's gonna be fine it's all gonna work out maybe brisket's just really dusty in there and just needs a good old cleaning All right, so we have a slight turn of events. We're about 17 kilometers from Eagle Plains and we saw a couple that we actually ran into yesterday at the Arctic Ocean pulled over with a flat tire. So we stopped to help them. And while we were helping them, they told us that the bridge up ahead is closed. There was an accident yesterday and it's closed the bridge. They don't know when it's going to reopen because there's like a semi truck stuck on it or something like that. So we can't even get to Eagle Plains. So that makes it so we can't get the van looked at or get a code reader tonight. They actually went ahead to see if the bridge is still closed and they're gonna text us on our satellite device um, with an update. But yeah, so we're just currently right here. We're just stopped, we're just kind of waiting it out. And we texted my dad on the Garmin to tell him what was happening with the van to see if he could look something up for us. And he says the van is probably in limp mode, which basically means it's gonna be like not operating at full capacity until it can get fixed. There's a lot we don't know, but yeah, we're kind of just stuck here at the moment. And the bridge is definitely an unexpected turn of events because that means we can't go get help with the van and we have no idea when we can. So we're just gonna hang out here for a little bit, make some dinner and then, I don't know. <laughs> Even though the van is in limp mode, it can still drive, but since we're stuck here, I'm gonna try to diagnose it myself. And one theory I have is uh, there's a valve here called an EGR valve, which from my understanding, it has something to do with the emissions. Um, and every now and then I have to clean it because it gets, you know, kind of sooty and it, the valve in there gets stuck. Um, and before all these issues happened, the van was giving me the issues uh, that kind of tell me that this valve is dirty. So I'm thinking maybe it's really dirty from all the dust maybe on the road. Um, that's my best guess. So I'm going to take that out and take a look at it, clean it off. Maybe that'll solve the issue, we'll see. This is the valve I'm talking about. It's supposed to be able to turn and open as much as it wants to, you know? And it's supposed to be silver <laughs> if it's clean. And you can see all the black soot on there. And so I just pushed it here and it's not even, you know, going back to the place it's supposed to be like there. So I open it and it's not closing. So that's not ideal, but I can clean that, so. That's probably the issue then. Hopefully. Maybe. We'll see. I don't know. 
Adam is sacrificing his toothbrush and clean teeth to try to fix this. I uh, got it cleaned up a decent amount. It can do what it needs to do now. You know, going all the way back to its starting position. Good job! Yeah. <laughs> so we're driving again and after cleaning the valve, it feels like it's back to normal and I can change the gears here. Even though the check engine light is still on, it's driving like it should. So that's gotta be a good sign, right? So our plan for the night is to drive to the bridge closure and then sleep there for the night. The couple that we met earlier drove down there and they sent us a message, but then they also drove back up to where we were and told us that there's about 10 cars or so waiting in line for the bridge to open. They also said there was some engineer from Whitehorse that came in today, took some measurements, but then he left, but he might come back. So there's a lot of uncertainty of like what the status is of this bridge and when it will reopen, but we're feeling Hopeful that it'll be soon, hopefully tomorrow, but there's really no telling. You know, it's kind of funny. We missed the Alaska Highway bridge closure because the bridge got washed out on the Alaska Highway. We missed that by a month. We were a month ahead of that. So now we're getting our dose of bridge closures on roads that are kind of remote and hard to uh, be stuck on. But we are thankful for quite a few things. We're one, thankful that the van is running and it's driving, even if it's having some issues. We're thankful we ran into that couple and they told us about the bridge closure. We also had a guy that we met last night at Grandma's Kitchen drive by and he stopped and helped us for a bit, so we're thankful for that. We're super thankful for this Garmin because without this, we would not have been able to tell our families what's going on and that we're okay. We're also you know, able to talk to my dad and he's able to help us kind of diagnose things. And I'm very thankful that we have this van that we can sleep in, we can cook, we have a bathroom, we have everything we need. And at the grocery store earlier today, I thought, let's get a little bit of extra food, more than we need, just in case. So I'm glad that we at least have enough food. So we have a lot going for us right now. It's definitely not how we anticipated the drive back going, but it's gonna be okay. Well, we got to the bridge closure and guess what? The check engine light is off. Woo! We might have solved one problem. <laughs> but now we have the bridge problem still. Yeah. We went to the bridge to go scope out the situation and along the way met some really great people as well as a super cute dog. And there's a big community vibe going on out there. Everyone's chatting with each other. Some people are even making a fire and listening to music together. It's just really neat to see how this unexpected situation can kind of bring people together. Some people have been here since 7.30 this morning. They've been sitting here all day long, which is so crazy. And from what we could see on the bridge and from what we've heard, we kind of have a clear picture of what happened now. And the story I told earlier isn't totally correct. So apparently this big truck or this semi hit the top of the bridge and dented the top of the bridge and then turned around and didn't tell anyone for hours what happened. So cars were driving on the bridge like nothing was wrong for hours. So it's obviously safe-ish enough. No one collapsed, the bridge didn't collapse, no one got injured during that time frame, so hopefully it'll be a quick fix and we'll be out early tomorrow morning. One vehicle's gonna cross, your next vehicle's gonna come to a stop until that vehicle crosses the bridge entirely. Then after that, next vehicle's gonna go. Uh, once we get traffic down the other side, we're gonna alternate. One vehicle going one way, one vehicle going the other. Not gonna lie to you, it's gonna be a slow process. So, it's, but we're moving, so. Thank you. All right, we get to go over the bridge. Woo! -hoo! We're getting out of here. Yeah, 8.30 in the morning. While the situation was a little stressful and scary at first, just with all of the unknowns, it worked out super well. We made some new friends. We had a safe place to sleep last night. And now we have an interesting story about our drive on the Dempster Highway. We made it across, woohoo! Woo! It did not collapse on us! Yeah, and the van is running great. We believe we have about half the Dempster Highway left, so our plan is to drive the rest of it today. We may stop for the hike that we mentioned earlier on in this video, but the weather's kind of iffy right now. It's very cold and rainy and foggy, so we'll see what it's like when we get to that point, so stay tuned. There's the end of the road. Oh my gosh. We survived oh. the Dempster Highway. Yes. <laughs> no flat tires, no cracked windshield. We did it. Do you just feel, do you feel lighter? I just this giant weight off my shoulders. I feel so good. <laughs> we made it out in one piece. <sighs> 
feels good. <laughs> Look at how dirty brisket is. Oh my gosh. I don't even have to blur out the license plate because you can't even read it. <laughs> what an adventure that was. We drove to the freaking Arctic Circle. We got in the Arctic Ocean. We saw the Northern Lights for the first time and we just saw so much incredible scenery along the way. There were a few curveballs towards the end of the journey, but they honestly only made it more memorable. And that, that was just hands down one of our favorite things we have ever done. Overall, honestly, the road wasn't as bad as all the horror stories I read and how much I hyped it up in my head. There were a few rough, rough sections, you know, but if you just take it slow or cautious with your rig or whatever you're going out there with and be prepared, you'll be okay. You know, the possibility of something going wrong is definitely real. We came across several different people who had issues like flat tires and things like that. And luckily we didn't have anything like that other than our one minor van issue, but definitely prepare your vehicle, make sure you're prepared for flat tires and a couple other common things that can happen on the road. Or bridge closures. Yeah, or bridge closures. <laughs> yeah, take take into account like things like that can happen. So plan a little extra time, food. take extra food, water, things like that, and just have fun with it because it is an amazing journey and I'm just so glad we did it. <laughs> Me too. It was the best. Yeah. But from here, we're gonna head to Whitehorse, which we visited on our way to Alaska, and then drive to the start of the Cassier Highway, which is partially how we'll get back to the lower 48. And since we have a pretty big time crunch to get back down, and we've already filmed a good chunk of this next part of the drive, we're not gonna film over the next few days, and we'll see you at the start of the Cassier Highway. 